passage and I was on elevator duty, which means mm. I was the lift girl. <laughs> and um, I thought, well, I have to speak to her. I mean, I yeah. have to speak to her. She's coming down the passage. And I said, hi, Oprah, and hi, Gail. You know, when mm. I think about it, I want to cringe that I just said, hi, Oprah. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm from South Africa, and I'm Colin's friend, and I'm, I'm here to work for your event, and wow. I'm very honored to be working for you. Wow. And I said, I also love what you're doing with your school, your leadership yeah. school, because you put your money where your mouth is. Yeah. And all ace other even worse. Mm. We didn't have food. We we really came from <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. Alright. <laughs> Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Ultimate Leadership Podcast with Lopumlo. Jorka, if you are new to this platform, this is a leadership and business development platform, and we want to see more young, energetic, vibrant leaders emerge from all walks of life. Um, this is a very, very special episode because uh, since we started the podcast, we've only had one lady on the podcast, and I'm sure you know her. Her name is Nossi, or you're from Vision for Academy. So um, we've got Mrs. Michelle. Um, Brown. Is it Mrs. I, I, yes. Mrs. Michelle. Mrs. Michelle Brown in the house. So let's give it up for Michelle Brown. Um, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Sorry, I can hear something you can't, so that's fine. Uh, now, if you don't know who Michelle Brown is, she's an amazing woman. The first time I met her was, I'm not sure if she'll remember, but it was four or five years ago. And, um, there was an event hosted by the Rato Tipa, and she was one of the speakers. I was emceeing the event. Uh, Mutsa was supposed to be there. Um, there was another gentleman from Father's House. I'm not sure if you still remember, but that's the first time. I'm sure you do a lot of events, so you won't remember. That's the first time I met you. So absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for having us on the show, and thank you for hosting us at this amazing venue. Absolute pleasure. Yeah. The Boardwalk is an amazing venue and happened to be one of my clients. So it's very easy <laughs> to be able to use yeah. the executive boardroom. Shout out to the Boardwalk. Uh, I'm sure we'll take a few shots so that you guys can see how amazing this place is. And uh, I'm sure whenever you have events and stuff like that and you're looking for an amazing up-class uh, place to use, this is the Boardwalk. You are more than welcome to make use of it. Now, if you don't know Michelle Brown, uh, she's got an amazing, I'm just going to read like a snippet of what she does, um, but she has more than three decades of experience, 30 years of experience um, uh, in the public relations and events management consultancy, and over the years she has worked with some reputable brands locally and internationally. I'd love us to talk about that uh, a bit later on uh, in the PR and in the communication industry. Uh, she's a skilled corporate PR, event management, media relations, public relations, network and um, mentoring guru. And she has extended a field of expertise uh, during hard lockdown, acquired her T-E-L-F. I don't know what -E that is. T-E-L-F. It says a T-E-L-F. Oh, no, T-E-F-L. Uh, <coughs> Teaching uh, That's you. That's her, okay? <laughs> Teaching uh, English as a foreign language. Teaching English, oh, that's what it means. Um, but she is an amazing leader who learns and leads with integrity throughout her life, and she studied public relations in PE Tech, which is now known as Nelson Mandela University, mm -hmm. and uh, she has agreed to talk to us today. Thank you so much again. Uh, you've got an amazing story to tell. You are, I've been following you from afar for, I think, the last four years or so, ever since... <laughs> Uh, you spoke at that event, and um, and I think there are very very few people that um, are like you and that do what you do the way that you do it. So maybe let's start with. I know that every platform has its own people. So for the for the people that are maybe seeing your face for the first time, um, how would you introduce yourself and what you do to them? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. That that's really a big privilege for me. Um, how would I introduce myself? I'm a very proud Port Elizabethan. Or a Is that a word? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Port well, if it, well, if it isn't, I made it up. So I am. Um, I tell people whenever I travel in South Africa or anywhere else that I'm from Nelson Mandela Bay. 
Um, and I say it with pride mm. to be aligned with Nelson Mandela. Um, I'm, I'm someone who is, I think you touched on it, is driven by principles and integrity. Yeah. And if you cross the line with me, I just walk away. So um, I'm really, really kind of strict on my principles yeah. and my integrity because you know what? At the end of the day, that's all we have. Yeah. And so if someone crosses the line with me or or disrespects me, I have to walk away because mm. then I can't work with you. So I have lost one or two corporate clients because of that. Sure. But I sleep comfortably at night. But if <clears throat> if their principles don't align with mine, and I'm not being big-headed or anything, yeah. it's just that's me. And so if if their principles don't align with mine, I have to walk away. And I'm sure they sleep well at night too. Even so. if they pay you big bucks? Yeah. I won't, I won't work with people that don't share my integrity. Um, and so I have been doing this in my own business for 34 years. Mm. February next year will be 35. And I have my own PR consultancy, as you rightly said. Um, what am I most, most proud of? My children. Wow. I'm a mom. Wow. 34 years ago, take us back a minute. How you, how you started your, your business? 34 I, years is a long time. It's a long time, hey. I look very young. Um, <laughs> but 34 years is a long time. And, and, and in fact, my boss at the time said to me, Michelle, why don't you actually go into event management? Because I hear people phoning you all the time and they're asking you who should they use, which venue should they use, which caterer. And you're always giving people advice, so why don't you actually do it as a business? which I thought was 10 out of 10 to my boss at the time, right? Who was your boss at the time? Uh, a man who was the boss of, you all too young to know, Garlic's department store, but I was the PR at Garlic's, Garlic's in Governor Becky. Um, like a Stutterford's, like, you know, a big department store. And so I decided to do that. Mm. And I went on my own. And it was a big risk um, in those days and still is today. And 34 years later, I'm still here. I work from home. I mm. work with myself. Did you have to borrow money to start? Did a family member or my did you save My family helped me. Okay. Yeah, my family helped me. And um, I started working from home and I still work from home. So, mm. so I think that's one of the lessons that I, I learned humility. Mm. So I didn't work in, I didn't want this huge, fabulous, glamorous office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I worked from my dining room table. Mm. And I've upgraded 34 years later to work from a little office. Wow. But that's the only upgrade. <laughs> and, and I still work. It's just me. And you're intentional about working from home and you're enjoying it. And Yeah. I am intentional. And when my children were growing up, obviously, it was nice to work from home. Yeah. But the problem with working from home, though, I've found over the years, is that people know that you work from home. So they, they contact you at all hours. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not a corporate nine to five, you know. Mm. They know you're going to be at home, so you have to set boundaries. Mm. So um, <clears throat> you've you've done amazing work with a lot of clients, um, a lot of corporate clients, and uh, I'm sure you've got loads and loads of stories to tell. Um, so <clears throat> in in looking at your journey, um, when did you get your first? big break and how did that happen? Because a lot of our listeners and our viewers are entrepreneurs and they're leaders and they're people that want to be where you are, but they, you know, for them, it mustn't take 30 years. They'd want it to maybe take five or six or seven years. But so, it is a process. Yeah. So it doesn't take 24 hours. And some young people think it does. Let's maybe move your mic a bit closer. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry. And some young people think that it does take maybe a year. Yeah. Or six months, and it doesn't. So my first break was with a, a corporate client, Adrian Gardner, who is the chairman of the Mantis Group. And I, I approached him, and I said to him, I've started on my own now. I would ask you to give me a chance mm. and put me on your team that is about to put together a huge event mm. for you in Plettenberg Bay. Please give me a chance, because I don't know how else I'm going to start this. Yeah. He gave me a chance, and 34 years later, he is still my corporate client wow. through Mantis. He's a friend, and he's my mentor. And so that was my first big break. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing, because I actually listened to that, uh, you telling that story, I think, on another platform, and I thought, man, 
having the same client for 34 years, that's mm. rare. You don't find that these days. No. And so he's become a mentor to me. He's a friend to me. And the boardwalk, I was here. I've had them for, as a client for 23 years. So since the sod turning ceremony, when they, when they turned the first sod of soil here, um, they were my client. So, so, so what, what, what services do you actually offer? So for instance, what do you do for the boardwalk? I say to them, do? yeah, I will, I will help you with your public relations. Um, this morning we did a year-end breakfast for several of the media in Port Elizabeth or Nelson Mandela Bay. Mm. I will help you to source them. I will get them here. Um, I will make sure that I'm here. Uh, I will do the follow-up because some people think if you do events management, the event ends and then you end. Mm. But that's not the point. The point is that you still have to send the thank yous to the sponsors, to the venue, to the whoever. Um, you still have to follow up. And follow-up is very important. Mm. So um, I will do event management for my clients. Mm. I will do media liaison for my clients. I did completed one year of journalism at Rhodes University. Mm. And so I know how a media release should be written. Um, and I will write media releases for them. Um, I will connect them with my network. That's really important, yeah. you know. Because if mm. you don't know someone and you want to find someone in another space, I'll yeah, say to yeah, you, yeah. Oh, I think I've got someone for you. And, and I guess that's I one of the them. most important things is mm. your relationships. You've built quite a All nice... All about relationships. That's amazing. Yeah. I'm sure you've got amazing stories to tell. I mean, being a businesswoman, leader, entrepreneur, um, that's been doing what you're doing for over 30 years. Uh, I'm sure you've learned quite a lot of lessons. I'm sure... Uh, you've met some amazing people. You've worked with some amazing people. Um, so uh, what are those crazy um, moments that you'd say, man, I didn't expect something like this to happen in my business, if you think back? I think one of the lessons I have to share with you is humility okay. and being able to say, I'm sorry, I messed up. Mm. But if you own it and you do apologize and you say it will not happen again, then I think you get the you gain the respect of people. Mm. So um, my late dad always said to my brothers and I, one lesson you have to learn, whether you're a sports person or in the workplace, is that the game is always bigger than the man. Mm. And so no one must ever think they're more special than the game. Never. I don't care who you are. Um, so I will always treat people, these celebrities you talk about, I will treat them with utmost respect, but I cannot be a groupie. Because mm. I don't believe cannot in Cannot be? A groupie? A groupie. I cannot what do you mean by that? be like this mad fan who will, <clears throat> if they say, we only, we only want white chairs in our dressing room, I'm like, seriously, get over yourself. Seriously. <laughs> um, so I sometimes think I'm in the wrong game. <laughs> Are you that type of person? <laughs> yeah. Are you? I'm very direct. Is it? Yeah. Um, and so what you see is what you get. And, um, you know, one of my highlights was working for Oprah Winfrey. Yeah. That it was a highlight. You might have read yeah. about that. And there I learned from her. I went over to California. I worked for three days on an event that she hosted a few years ago. And I learned from her about being humble. Uh, she hosted the event for a friend of hers who was turning 80 years old. Mm. And she said to him, uh, he was a retired, very wealthy man. And I managed to get onto the organizing team from through a friend of mine, Colin Cowie, who is a South African, mm. who was born in East, in East London, lived yeah. here for a bit, and now lives for the last 30 years or so in the United States. And amongst other clients, Oprah is one of his clients. Sure. He's Google him. What He's does he amazing. do? He does events. He hosts a talk show. He hosts a TV show. He writes. He's authored over nine books. But he's never forgotten that he came from the Eastern Cape. Wow. And you see, that's my, my thing. Mm. The game is always bigger than the man. And I always used to say to him, if you ever have an event that is in or around Los Angeles, where my family lives, who used to live in PE, let me know. Because honestly, I said to him, Colin, I want to work for you mm. at an event because you are the king of events. Well, that was the, the function. Mm. And he only told me just before I left that it was for Oprah. Wow because of security and confidentiality. And I worked there, and she hosted the event. She 
this this 80 year old that she was giving him his gift was a weekend of celebration mm. and she said you tell me where you want to have it you tell me who you want to be entertainment well he said i love patty labelle grammy award winning patty labelle so oprah flew her in from new york wow. um what do you want the next day um he said well i love gospel music so i'd love bb one and his band oprah flew them in wow. so i met those people and i had to pinch myself all the throughout those four days and say how long ago was that maybe it was about 2015 oh, that's mm. quite recent actually yeah 2014 wow. 2015 yeah so wow. i flew over and i worked for her and for colin actually and um that's been one of the highlights of my life did any you know other business come from that experience i'm sure you connected with people i connected or... with people but mainly on colin cowie's team oh, nice. and i keep in touch with him nice. but you know we weren't allowed to say anything to <laughs> we said really? no Was that well a rule? i mean we no 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 cameras no cell phones so no you didn't even take any pictures no 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 you were you would have been he said to us you would have security will escort you off the premises that's yeah. crazy but i did chat to her um the next day and um when i was wasn't allowed to talk to her and then the the friday night black tie ball and then on the saturday morning she and her security officer and gail her friend were coming down um and i'm very honored to be working here yeah. and she said Are you the lady last night with the beautiful necklace mm. Mm. so she saw you yeah but yeah. i never told her it was from woolworths <laughs> Mm. I said, "Oh, my African necklace! I had it. I had it specially made." <laughs> oh my God! That, yeah, that's so amazing, man. That's that's like that's beautiful. Like, um, and I think you having uh, because even with um, with the very first client that you got, you actually went out and you spoke, and even with this event, you reached out to your friend. Um, would you say? that's like one of your greatest assets as an entrepreneur your ability to actually be bold and go out and engage with people is that how you get most of your business or does do people flock to you from referrals is it so someone will say you know i've been recommended by such and such a corporate but at the end of the day you still have to deliver right yeah 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 on what you promise um and uh, and so my integrity comes into play there mm. so if i promise a corporate client such and such I make sure that I deliver. I'm mm. also very hands-on. So if the client books me at the media breakfast this morning, I, I must be at the breakfast. Yeah. I can't just say, "Okay, I hope you all have a fabulous time." Mm. I have to be there. Um and so yeah, I I think the older one gets and maybe this is a lesson to the young entrepreneurs, you start off with an amazing amount of humility and the desire to learn from yeah. people. and almost like be a sponge and just learn whatever you can. Yeah. Um I think the older you get though, you learn that if you don't make the approach, no one's going to do it for mm. you. But you have to be able to deliver. There's the kicker, you know. Mm. So if you say I will organize your corporate event at the boardwalk for 500 people, well then you must be able to mm. gather a team around you and or, so we organized that event and that's that's another lesson i learned is that teamwork makes the dream work yeah you can't be someone in my industry who wants the limelight because mm. i'm just me yeah. in my business but i surround myself with people who are better at what they do than i am wow and so i know they'll wow. deliver wow. yeah i'm sure you've made many mistakes mm. in the past Absolutely. 30 30 years or so mm. Um <clears throat> what are some of those key not key but what are some of those big business um mistakes that you've made that you would want younger people to not make Well I I don't think it's really a mistake but I I've learned along the way that ethic to be ethical mm. is also very important So for example one of my corporate clients is RMB Rand Merchant Bank yeah. which means I cannot be doing work for Investec not even a golf day one of my corporate clients is vodacom mm. i cannot be doing These work for mtn these are huge clients eh yes wow. i cannot be doing work for mtn i i cannot be wearing an mtn cap anyway mm. that's just so unethical so um it's very important to me ethics are important and 
if I've made a mistake over the years, I'm prepared to own it mm. and admit it and, and say, I'm really sorry, that was my fault, I dropped the ball, I assure you it will not happen again. Wow. Because mistakes must be lessons learned. Yeah. Mustn't they? Yeah. I think so. Not yeah. everyone's perfect. Not even Oprah's perfect. Yeah. Um, and one thing I learned from her that she said is that she she judges her friends and other people who are cl work closely with her on how they treat others who are lower on the ladder than she is. So when she goes to a restaurant, I'll never forget this, she she watches how people treat um, the, wait the waiter. Mm. She watches how people treat the person who takes your dirty plates mm. off the table. And and yeah. those people must be treated with respect. Yeah, And that's a big thing in my book. And I say to my children, if you want people to respect you, you need to respect them. Mm. Respect <clears throat> begets respect. Mm. And so I will always try. And if people disrespect me, um, as I said to you earlier, I just walk away. I can't deal with that. Why is that? Because you, you, I respect them. I think you've said this quite quite a number of times, even on other platforms, that you're very big on integrity and all of that. Why, where does that come from? My parents. I think my late parents. Yeah, they were very big on respect for others, a respect for yourself, because you must respect yourself yeah. and respect others around you, even though they might not fit into your little box. Yeah. Um, you know, you give them respect. And if those people don't return the respect, I can't, I can't waste time on them. Mm. Sorry. So let's say you're sitting here and um, there's a younger you um, watching. Um, and, or maybe let's put it like this. And you're talking to yourself 34 years ago before you actually go out and venture out and start your business. So what would you say to your younger self? What advice would you give yourself? knowing all of the things that you know now 34 years later. I, I love that. I, I think I would say to myself, Michelle, don't get upset when you don't win every single pitch that you mm. job that you pitch for. Just respect that the person doesn't need your services mm. at that time, but there might come a time when they will need you and they will hear about you and they will approach you. And mm. that has happened, by the way. And that's fine. You, you, there are a lot of people who do what I do. And that's fine. Please use them. Maybe they're cheaper than me. Maybe they're younger than me. Mm. I don't know. Whatever the case may be. But it's interesting how some of those people come back to me and say, we'd like to now use you because maybe the they've other been people disappointed. Didn't, didn't, dis didn't deliver what we thought. You know, It's not about me in this industry. It's about the client. Mm what the client needs, not mm. what I want. But I've been in this game for 34 years, which means I am in a position to advise and advise and guide my clients on what works, what doesn't work. Do you want that celebrity? I'll get that celebrity, but that celebrity doesn't align with your brand. And I don't mm. think you should be mm. booking them. Mm. Listen to me. I've been in the game a long time. <laughs> um, and that celebrity is always late, misses yeah. their flight. And that impacts on your brand, I say to the client. So, you know, if you want me to get them, I'll get them. But please take some advice from me. Mm. Um, if, if, um, if tomorrow something had to happen and you had to pass away, you know, I'm not sure if you've ever thought about that. Um, what would you be most proud of in your career besides your family and your children? Well, you know... I think I have to say that I would be most proud of never thinking I'm bigger than anybody else mm. and, and that I've never forgotten where I started and I've never forgotten who has helped me. Mm. And I would be most proud of being a voice for women because we still don't have a voice. I don't care if it's 2022. Mm. Um, how so? How so if I'm sitting at a boardroom meeting in a board meeting in a boardroom, and this happened to me in Johannesburg a few years ago, and I was the only woman in the boardroom, and I wasn't hosting the meeting, and we were having the meeting, and the lady came in with the tray of tea, and she put it in the center of the boardroom table, and every single man in that room stopped and looked at me. 
And I thought, I'm not pouring the tea. Mm. I'm not hosting this. If I'm hosting it, I'll pour the tea with pleasure. And I remember opening my diary and pretending to be very, very busy. And I thought, Michelle, stand your ground here because this is what you tell other women mm. to do. And what felt like an age was probably like six minutes. But eventually the CEO of that company who was hosting the board meeting said, um, Michelle, would you like a cup of tea? And I said, oh, my word, I thought you'd never ask. Thank wow. you. Because I won't accept um, mm. that kind of behavior towards women. And it's, it's something that I feel very, very strongly about. So mm. it's something that I've always taught my daughter mm. as, as a mother to a daughter. And I think equally as a mother to a son mm. to treat women with respect. And I'm very, really, I'm very adamant about that. Mm. Yeah, and we've got some ladies in the room <laughs> here that would attest And I think to that. younger women need to hear that, by yeah. the way. So um, I was at a function one evening, and I, w I was sitting at the head of the table, not by design, and there were men down the side, you know, of the table, and mm. they were talking about the rugby game that had happened on the, on the Saturday afternoon, and, and they ignored me, I think unintentionally. Yeah. I, I, I kind of listened for about a minute, and I thought, Michelle... You've got to have a voice. And I tapped the man next to me. I said, um, excuse me, I just want to say something. Gentlemen, if I could just have your attention for one moment. And they all like looked as if, oh, my God, you hear? Um, I said, I hear you talking about the rugby match. I also watched the rugby game. I also know what happened. So I'm not sure why you think I'm invisible. Mm. And they were, oh, no, sorry, we didn't even realize. I said, no, no, that's fine. But do you have Sia Khaleesi on your WhatsApp? Do you have his number? Because I do. You've got Sia Khaleesi's number? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was friends with my daughter at school. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Oh. I do. Yeah. And so suddenly they all realized, oh, yeah. she actually has a voice. Um, I'm, I'm really, if, if women don't stand up for themselves, even in 2022, mm. no one's going to stand up for us. Yeah. So, big um, lesson. Maybe um, can I, if I can just chip in there, um, on the conversation of women, I know that you've sat in the business of women of South Africa. How was that experience for you? Well, I was the local chair of the Business Women's Association many years ago. Um, and then I, 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 I sat on the board of the national board. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. It was wonderful to network with other incredible women and because of that network, and I think you were talking about it, it's all about relationships. Yeah. So in the hard lockdown, when we were re in that real hard lockdown, when we all were sitting at home and we were all online, I thought, I always mentor people. Why can't we mentor people online? Mm. And I'm not going to keep it to PE. I'm going to, keep, I'm going to branch out. Let's have a national network a mentoring initiative because we're all at home. So we're all online. And I started calling in some of my friends, my network, Yvonne Chaka Chaka, um, Nosipo Damasani, um, Edith Fenter, wow. uh, those kind of people. I had 16 women. And I said, this is our time, ladies, to give back. Mm. We're all sitting at home. I want to pair you each with a mentee. I'm asking you for one hour of your time a month for four months at no cost. But we've got to give back to the young people of this country while we are all sitting online. You mm. can do it on Zoom, on WhatsApp video, on Teams, but we're all online. Yeah. Are you prepared to do it? And they all said yes. And I had this amazing mentor circle, which I called Collective Insights. Mm. And we did it for three, four months. And then in 2021, we did it again. I said, will you, do, will you give me your time again with new mentees, which they agree to and... It's fabulous. That's amazing, man. Mm. And I'm sure you, you had some amazing testimonies from that experience amazing. from some of the ladies. Amazing. Yvonne Chaka Chaka, I've known her for many years. I paired her with a woman who was in her 60s from Cape Town who was a singer. Mm. She want, she'd cut two albums. She'd sung in clubs and all over with a band. But she just was at a crossroads. I said... Yvonne, will you, will you mentor this woman? And she said, sure. And she said to that woman, make a video mm. of you singing and you can also play the piano. Make a video and send it to corporates. 
and she did. And she phoned me, this woman in Cape Town said, you know, I've got three gigs booked in wow. November of 2020 when we weren't really, we were yeah. kind of just coming out of it. Um, and that's because of Yvonne. Mm, so that's yeah, amazing. amazing testimony. Let's maybe look into um, your leadership philosophy and your mindset and your approach towards leadership. Um, you know, just off air, you were talking about your favorite quote on leadership. I'd love you to talk more about that and what that means to you. But what does the ultimate uh, leader look like for you? The ultimate leader, first of all, the quote is from Lincoln Marley, who mm -hmm. um, you, you interviewed last time. And um, he said, if serving or service is beneath you, then leadership is beyond you. And that so resonated with me because I think leaders have to be servant leaders. Yeah. I think if I'm leading a young a group of young entrepreneurs, I need to I need to get my hands dirty. Mm. I can't be saying, well, I'm sitting here at the head of the table and you all must go and set up the room, for example, for this big function. I've got to also set up the room. Yeah. I love, that I, you, I love that you say that because a lot of people say that leaders must be servant leaders, but no one actually um, goes into the practicalities of how you actually serve people and what that means. Does it mean that I must always, um, you know, uh, like the example you made, pour tea for you first? When I, so what are some of those practical things? And I think maybe that's where we can finish off. What are some of those practical things that you would want people to emulate that you've tried out and that you do that, that say, I am a servant leader. I know how to serve my team. I know how to serve my community. What are those practical things? Well, I think, again, it goes back to respect. So respect every single person on your team and that each of those people brings something to the table which makes up this really strong team. So it's respect for, for others. I think if you say to your team, we are all going to get to the venue at 6 a.m. We are all going to put out the chairs and the tables and put the tablecloths on the tables. You need to be there at 5.30 a.m. Mm. so that when your team arrives at 6 a.m., you are already there. Yeah. Um, I think that, as I said to you, you need to get your hands dirty because leaders lead by example yeah. in my book. So if you're not prepared to be part of that example, how can you lead? Mm. Um, also, people take their cue from their leader. So I think leaders have to show respect. Again, yeah. to be respected. Yeah. A question from you? Yes. <laughs> um, first, a comment. I, th I, love, I love what you've just said about the tea and what have you, because I attended a ladies' branch <laughs> about two weeks ago, and one of the speakers, a male um, who works for Google, said... Women must stop this thing of if we're all in a room and they want to offer to make tea for everyone. Because the minute you do that, everyone starts seeing you as the tea lady. As but what example. if you're serving? You're just serving. You're not the tea lady. But we yeah. all have hands. We all can get up and make tea for ourselves. So yeah. I, love, I love what you just said there. Question for me, because you are a, I mean, you've been in business for 34 years. You're a mother. You're a wife. Um, what would you say, and, and we, we seldom have women in, in, in the podcast. I think you, Lupum mentioned that you're literally the second female. After Nasi. Yeah, after Nasi, yes. Um, and quite often when women make it, it's sort of, I wouldn't say difficult to uplift other women, but sometimes when we reach the top, we don't share our experiences with younger women, especially in corporate. If you find a leader a woman leader in corporate, they sometimes feel like their job is at expense if they try and bring up a younger woman to their level. What would you say to women who have made it like yourself and um, who made it to the top, so to say or so to speak, what would you say to those women to try and bring up other women who want to be at that level as well? Well, <clears throat> two things. When I was, when I finished here um, at the PE Technicon in those days um, with my PR diploma and I tried to get into CMDs of companies and I had to always, I was always very often rebuffed by the, by the secretary. Um, not always, but sometimes. And I made a vow to myself or a promise 
that when I achieved what I wanted to achieve in business, I would always help women climbing up the ladder mm. because no one helped me. And so I promised that, and today I still do that. Um, and so that leads me to the second thing is that, yes, we've climbed the ladder, but you know what? There's still that ladder. And so why aren't we looking back and putting our hand out and taking someone else's hand, woman or man, and helping them up that ladder? I don't understand it. Um, why are we being so territorial? We at the top. But you climb the top from where? Mm. From the bottom. Mm. And so put your mm. hand out and help others. And I think lockdown, when our president, I remember in March of 2020, came online and said, hashtag be kind to people. Yeah. We are all in this and it's going to be a tough journey. And please be kinder to people. And I'll never forget that. And 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 we all tried in our own small way to be kinder to people. Mm. And I think that's also what it's about. Sharing your knowledge, sharing your networks. I'm not going to give you Sia Khaleesi's number. <laughs> oh, um, no, man. But, <laughs> because I'm respectful of that. Yeah, that's important. So I yeah. can't give his number out, but yeah. I will say to, I will message him. And he doesn't reply to me straight away, but when he has a moment, he will reply. And if I'll say, can I connect you with so-and-so? Yeah. I will give them your email address. I promise you I will never give them yourself because I that's respect important. your privacy. Yeah, that's important. That's yeah. important. That's important. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time and thank you for sitting down with us. I know that this is going to be very, very valuable content for emerging young women and men mm. uh, across South Africa. Um, so my final question would, would be, what does a day look like for you? So what time do you wake up? What do you do? And what are some of your, you know, in asking this question, no one on the podcast has been able to answer this question properly. I've had Ethel Trollop, I've had Musi, I've had lots of, uh, I think Lincoln answered it, you know. Um, what are your leadership habits? What are some of your key leadership habits? Okay. I wake up at about six every morning. Um, I read the newspaper. I'm still old school. I don't read it online. I read the newspaper, which my husband gets from the post box. Um, and, he, and I have a cup of coffee. And I get ready for the day. Um, but every day is different yeah. in my industry. Every day is different. But here's the secret. You need to love every single day. Mm. So whether they're going to be challenges or opportunities... You've just got to love every single day because you know what? Lockdown taught us that life is so short yeah, yeah, yeah. and can change in a heartbeat. Yeah. It really did. So um, I embrace every single day. And um, what are my leadership habits? I think one of them is to always acknowledge and recognize when someone helps me. Wow. I always yeah. send thank yous. I always WhatsApp or email a thank you to anyone who has helped me mm. within... 24 hours, 12 wow. hours of an event. And that's important to recognize. Um, I had some varsity college students helping us last Friday night at the at the business chamber banquet here with 800 people. Did you and put that together? I, I, I helped. I, got, yeah. I gave them some advice. Yeah. I was a guest. But yeah. I said, I'll offer my services free, gratis. Please let me help you mm. in the planning. So we got some of the varsity college kids or students didn't say kids, and um, and they helped us with ushering in and checking people in because I said there are 800 people to check in and we've got to get them in quickly. Um, and so that very same night mm. at midnight, I knew they'd all left, but I knew that even if they got the message the following morning, I sat there and I did my thank yous mm. because wow. that's important. Wow. To recognize and acknowledge people, mustn't yeah. you? Yeah. People help you at least acknowledge and say thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and thank you for this conversation. And uh, I've got a great quote I would really like to share with yeah, everyone please. to end with, which I found in the hard lockdown um, by Julian Lennon, who was the son of the late John Lennon, the Beatle, um, one of the Beatles. And, and I, I saw it in the hard lockdown, and I <coughs> wrote it out, and I put it on my, on my desk, and every day I still look at it two mm. and a half years later. And he said, when the dust settles in all of this, in other words, the COVID and the lockdown, when the dust settles, we will realize three things. Number one, how little we need. Mm. 
Number two, how much we actually have. And number three, the true value of human connection. Because wow. we lost that for two years. Wow. I didn't see my children for three years. And that killed my, my mother's heart. It wow. killed me. Um, so that true value of human contact is something that we all lost around the world. Wow. wow. Yeah. That's an amazing quote. Um, thank you so much for this. Thank you for the conversation. And thank you for doing what you're doing, for mentoring people, for inspiring people. I think you're amazing. And um, I know that you've got more to give out to the world. So we're looking forward to the amazing events um, that you'll be putting together. I've attended two of your events. One oh. was the one where you were speaking. The other one was the one you um, put together with Tim Shaw. Um, yes. I was there. So that was, oh, that was right. amazing. That was amazing. Um, so how do people get in touch with you if they need your services? On my website. I on your website. Yeah. www.brownspr.co.za www.brownspr.co.za You're not on Facebook. You're not on Twitter. Yeah, of course. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I'm on Facebook and Instagram. Michelle Brown on Facebook. Not on Twitter. No. Why not? <laughs> Because I don't have the time. Um, Michelle Brown is my Facebook page and my Instagram is Michelle Brown 9177. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. And you